Hello everyone. In the last video, we have talked about how do we use pedigree to find out which allele is dominant or recessive in the non-settling inheritance. Let me check whether you still remember how to do it. Here, in this pedigree, which cross can be used to find out which allele is dominant or recessive? Is it cross A or B or C? Now let's look at cross A first. In cross A, both the parents are having the same phenotype, so we can use it. However, none of their offspring have opposite phenotype of them, so we can't use cross A. How about cross B? The parents are not of the same phenotype, so we can't use it. But for cross C, we can use it because we can find out the golden triangle in which the parents have the same phenotype but at least one of their offspring do not have the same phenotype as them. And in this case, the parent's phenotype will be the dominant phenotype, which means that the allele for normal is dominant, while the allele for disease is recessive. Remember, this method can only be used for non settling pedigree. <laughs> How about if the question tells you that the gene is located on the sex chromosome, then it becomes the sex link inheritance. In fact, even if it's sex link, we can still have a special method to identify which allele is dominant or recessive. For sex link inheritance, we have x link or y link. Let's take a look on the x link inheritance first. That is, the question tells you that the gene is located on the X chromosome. In this case, we are not going to find the golden triangle, just like the autosomal inheritance. We have to find out three differences. First, different generation. Second, different sex. Third, different phenotype. Let's look at this example. First, we have to find out different generation. That is, it must be a cross generation, like generation 1 and 2, or generation 2 and 3. Second, we need to find different sets, so it must be father and daughter, or mother and son. Third, it has a different phenotype, that means if the father is white, the daughter must be black, or the mother is black, the son must be white. In this example, can you locate these three differences? Yes, it is one or five. One more. Three and seven. One more. Six and ten. One more. Two and four. These pairs fulfill our requirements. With this pair, we can quickly identify which allele is dominant or recessive. And it is always the phenotypes of the females of this pair being dominant. In our case here, the allele for disease is dominant. Why I can say so? Then we involve the second and third step on how to solve these questions. After step 1, we have located the three differences. Step 2 is for you to feel more comfortable to explain it to the marker. It is to write down XY chromosome for male and XX chromosome for female. Let's take a look on pair 1 and 5. Father 1 is a male, so he must have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome, while the daughter 5 is a female, so she must have two X chromosomes. Okay, so this is the second step. So the first step, talk about the males first. It can be father or it can be son, but we always start with male in our answer. Now, look at the phenotype of male, as it only has one X chromosome. The X chromosome of this father one must bear the allele which can express. What is expressed now is the normal phenotype expressed. So his X chromosome must bear the allele for the normal phenotype. I just put normal there. And this X chromosome bearing the normal phenotype must inherit to his daughter which is individual 5. So, one of the X chromosomes of individual 5 must bear the allele for normal. However, when you look at the phenotype of individual 5, she is having disease. In other words, another X chromosome of individual 5 must bear the allele for disease. So now you can see very clearly that individual 5 must be 
heterozygous. And in heterozygous condition, only the dominant allele can express. And now what you can see the phenotype of individual 5 is she is having disease. So in this case, her allele for disease masks the allele for normal. That's why the allele for disease must be the allele which is dominant. By the way, just a very quick tip. In order to answer this type of question which is related to X-linked inheritance, in your answer, please mention the allele is located on the X chromosome. In other words, you have to write for example, in individual 1, you have to mention that individual 1 is normal, so his X chromosome must bear the allele for normal. While you better not say that all oh, individual 1 is normal, so his allele is normal. Okay? So you need to mention the X chromosome bearing the allele for normal. For sex-linked inheritance, we also have Y-linked inheritance, in which the genes are located on the Y chromosome. This type of question are very very uncommon in the public exam, but it's still sex linked. So why don't we talk about that? For white link inheritance, actually you don't need to determine whether the allele is dominant or recessive because at most a person can only have one Y chromosome like a male. So if the gene or the allele is located on the Y chromosome, there will not be homozygous or heterozygous. There is a term called hemozygous. In homozygous phase, whatever is on the Y chromosome can express. And there is a very, very common characteristic of y link inheritance, which is when the father has a particular phenotype, this particular phenotype, which is controlled by the gene located on the Y chromosome, must inherit this allele to his son. So look at this example here. When individual 1 has the disease, he passes this allele to his son, individual 4, and thus individual 4 must have the disease because the Y chromosome of individual 4 must come from individual 1. Same for that for individual 7, which inherit the Y chromosome from individual 4. So 1, 4, 7, all males have disease. This is the characteristic of y link inheritance. Just now we have mentioned how pedigree can be used to determine the allele whether it's dominant or recessive. This is the first type of question that can be asked in the exam. How about the second type? Same as last time, the questions may ask you to use the pedigree to identify the genotype of different individuals in the pedigree. Again, as I always say that to deal with testing inheritance, I personally must write down XY for male, XX for female. So that when I'm answering questions, I will feel more confident. Let's draw it. Finish. And this time, our example is given that the allele for normal is dominant, the allele for disease is recessive. And the allele is located on the X chromosome, so it's X linked. To find out the genotypes of these individuals, for males, it is very obvious because all the males have only one X chromosome. Whatever being shows up in the male, the X chromosome must bear that allele. So for individual one, he is normal, so his X chromosome must bear the allele for normal. And so as for individual 3, he is having disease, so his X chromosome must have the allele for disease. For female who is having the recessive phenotype, it is very obvious that these female must be having the genotypes of homozygous recessive, as these recessive allele can only show up in the homozygous recessive state. So now look at individual 7, both of her X chromosome must bear the allele for disease because disease allele is recessive this time. And the remaining question is how about individual 2 and individual 4? This is the most commonly asked in the exam. Now let's find out the genotype of individual 2. But then even though we are trying to find out the genotype of individual 2, we don't usually start with individual 2. We will start from her offspring. In this example, we are going to use individual 5 to explain first. Now, individual 5 is a male, so he has only one X chromosome. We know it. So write down your answer. And having disease, his X chromosome must bear the allele for disease. This X chromosome bearing the allele for disease must be inherited from his mother, which is individual 2. Now, look back to individual 2. She is normal, so she must have at least one X chromosome bearing the allele for normal. Therefore, individual 2 must 
B. heterozygous. And that's how to identify the genotypes of individuals in the pedigree. And then, now, please try to identify the genotype of individual for yourself. Actually, I have put a suggested answer in the description below. Please take a look. Dun 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 dun. Just now, we have mentioned how do we use the pedigree to determine the genotypes of individuals. And the third type of question that can be asked in the pedigree will be to determine the probability to have a particular type of genotype or phenotype in the offspring. For example, individual 3 and 4. What is the chance for them to have a daughter with disease? For this type of question, they may ask you to explain in words or draw genetic diagrams. So please refer to my videos on self linkage to revise how sex link genetic diagrams should be drawn. Leave your answer in the comment below so that I know whether you can do it or not. So the fourth type of question that can be asked in the sex link pedigree. Actually, it's not really related to sex link because it asks you to prove whether the gene is sex link by reading the pedigree. To deal with this question, you should be very familiarized with sex link. There are some must. If you know all these marks in Sesling, and if the pedigree shows any inheritance that violates this must, then it is not Sesling. I am too tired. Maybe I directly teach in the class or make another video. Now, finally, just some recap. What questions can be asked in the Sesling pedigree? First, it will ask you to determine whether the allele is dominant or recessive. And remember our three steps. First, find out those three differences. Different generation, different sex, different phenotype. And then write the XY for male, XX for female. And the last step is always talk about the male first. And the second type of question is to ask you to determine the genotypes of individuals in the pedigree. The third question is to predict the probability of having particular genotype or phenotype in the offspring. And the fourth type of question is to ask you to determine whether the gene is sexling or not. By the way, just a reminder, depending on the question, actually you need to write the complete name of the phenotypes. For example, normal color vision, don't write normal. Or colorblind, don't write disease. And the second reminder is to not always assume the disease must be recessive. There are definitely some genetic diseases which are dominant. Also, some questions do not involve a disease. It may be just two different phenotypes. For example, five-toed foot or six-toed foot. They are just two phenotypes, not disease. And the bonus reminder, it is extremely important whether the inheritance is settling or not makes a lot of difference. I have seen so many students confuse the uses of settling and non settling method to solve the questions. For example, they drew X and Y in the genetic diagram of those Mendelian inheritance, which doesn't involve settling gauge, or vice versa. For settling questions, they do not put X and Y in the genetic diagrams. And this is always mentioned in the market's report to remind students not to do it again. So please read the questions carefully. Make sure you know whether the question is asking sessing or not. That's all. See you next time. Goodbye class.